Chapter 9, the recovery phase. Okay, I've reset things a bit. I've taken away all the skills. I've, un uh, I've reset the game, basically, so I haven't even drawn the first encounter. I just want to sort of take a step back for a second and uh, kind of do a little bit of an overview and then get into the recovery phase. So let's say uh, uh, we're in greenhorn mode here, and I'm going to give uh, a free training point to Patches, so I'm going to give Patches a med kit. Then we're going to draw the, our first new encounter, which is going to be leaving Omendar. Day counter, remember, goes up by one automatically. Uh, we get a choice of two training points or a training point, and, and then a choice from among two loot. Choose one to keep. So, um, and, and we get a progress point. Now, I recommend that when you succeeded at, a, um, at, a, uh, at an encounter, and Obviously, there wasn't much to do in this case. We uh, succeeded pretty quickly. I recommend you record the progress point right away. Do that first because it'll be easy to forget about it. So just come over here to the green progress box in the top left corner. Right click it as you would normally to increase a value. And now you've recorded that progress point. Uh, so let's say we decide to uh, take the training point and uh, draw two loot, choose one to keep. So I'll, let's say I give fast hands to patches, and then I draw a loot card, and I draw another loot card, and I got a choice of raider armor or red minotaur, and I'm going to discard the red minotaur by right-clicking it, and we'll keep the raider armor. Okay, so... Uh, Let's say the other three gear locks have done the same, and they uh, uh, also uh, got, have their training point and their loot and whatnot. Now it's time for the recovery phase. Now, if you forget the recovery phase, and it's easy to do that playing this game, even when you're not using the computer, I suppose, if you try to draw a new encounter and say, yes, let's advance the day, the program will remind you that, Somebody, in this case Patches, hasn't yet completed the recovery phase. Are you sure you want to advance the day? And uh, if you don't respond, it's going to default to no. So, uh, and I've stopped the timer here, but uh, so this is just a nice gentle reminder that uh, you don't want to forget the recovery phase. It's an important part of playing the game. So uh, if you go over, the, this is the area where the recovery phase is managed in this gray box. If you, simple, if you click on the recovery phase, all that does is gives you a, um, a summary of what the recovery phase is all about. So this basically just goes through what you should already know about the rules. Uh, I've also already demonstrated how you trade loot among members of the party, but I'll do it one more time. Let's say I come over here to Raider Armor. I want to give it to Pickett. So I click on Swap. I click on Pickett. And now Pickett has the Raider Armor. So, no, no big deal. Now, let's say we, uh, let me give, uh, let me give Patches a Trove Loot. So let me draw a Trove Loot. Okay, so we've got a, a, a Trove Loot with a combination of 5, 3, 1. All right, so let's say uh, all four uh, members, and this was the only Trove Loot we had, so all four gear locks uh, in my party are now going to, uh, sequentially make a lock picking attempt uh, in an attempt to uh, crack this lock. So uh, let me get rid of that box by clicking it and we'll have patches go first. So I'm going to go over here to pick lock. That automatically clears the, all the dice out of the roll area and, and loads the roll area with the four lock picking dice and then automatically rolls those dice. Uh, now, because you can't, uh, one quick note here, because you can't uh, drag a lockpicking die out of the roll area, there, you, you would never do that. Uh, in this case, remember, if you recall, normally double-clicking a, a die in the roll, in the dexterity, a dexterity roll area, uh, would toggle the hold on that die. In the case of lockpicking dice, because they have no other place where they can be dragged, a single click is sufficient to uh, hold a die. And it's much more. And, and since you often have to hold dice uh, when it comes to lockpicking dice, uh, that uh, actually is a nice little convenience. So anyhow, uh, it rolled. We got a save plus one, uh, two lever, three uh, trip, and three trip. 
we need to get five lever here. Uh, we didn't really, well, let's see, save plus one. That doesn't do us any good whatsoever. And this is going to be a tough, this is tough to crack anyhow, because we don't have any lock picking tools. Now remember, uh, on your first attempted lock, you can just sort of abandon that attempt and try again. So let's say I'm going to try again. Let's see if I get better results. So I got another save plus one, and I got no lever whatsoever. Okay, so this is a good example where I'm going to uh, cheat a bit, and I'm going to control uh, left click on the lever die, and I'm going to give myself three lever. And let's say that this uh, turned uh, out to be one lever. So now we have a save plus one. I would obviously apply the plus one to the uh, uh, the one, this one lever die, and I'm going to save it. I, mean, I don't have to uh, get rid of it. So by doing that, I've achieved my five lever. So I'm going to come over here and control click to uh, crack that lock. And now I have to get rid of the three lever die. So I'm going to right click it, as usual, to discard that die. And now I'm going to uh, roll again in an attempt to get uh, uh, the necessary three trip. So let me click roll. And I got three trip. And I got a re-roll. Um, let's say we wanted to hold on to the two trip and re-roll the one trip. Uh, I, I suppose this would obviously be silly. You'd, you, you'd, crack, you'd crack the lock and let another gear lock uh, in this particular case, uh, worry about cracking the third lock. Uh, but let's just say that we wanted to hold the two trip, so I'm going to click on it to lock it in. And now, because we have a re-roll on our, intuitive, our intuition die, and uh, I'm going to re-roll these other two dice. So with this uh, roll, I got my save plus one and a two trip. That would give me three trip. And that allows me to crack the second lock. And then if I, uh, I, I get to keep this die, so I roll again. And I got, uh, I got my one force, so I'm, all, I'm good to go. Uh, along with a re-roll and a three trip, which was unnecessary, so I would crack the lock. And I find out it's a mechanical boomerang. So uh, I think you get the idea. Now, there's a couple other things I, I want to demonstrate. Uh, let's say that uh, I discard this die and decide that, oh, wait a minute, I didn't mean to do that. That was a mistake. I can come back to the pick lock button, and if I right click on the pick lock button instead of left clicking on it, uh, it will simply refresh the lock picking dice with those that are missing and leave the other ones un, untouched and not re-roll the die, and not roll the dice. So uh, by right-clicking the pick lock button, I've gotten the, my lever and uh, my uh, trip dice back, and uh, I still have the force die uh, as it was and the intuition die as it was. So uh, I think you... Um, I think you, you, you get the idea. So uh, if, you, if for some reason you want to uh, bring back some of the pick locking, lock picking dice and then delete some, discard some, or uh, maybe just bring up the lock picking dice but not roll them right away, whatever the case may be, you, you've got a, enough combinations of things you can do uh, to make all that work the way you want it to work. Uh, and I think I demonstrated that you can control click just like any other die and see all the various sides of the dice, uh, of the particular die that you're looking at. Uh, and of course, uh, holding dice. Uh, so um, I think that pretty much covers lock picking. Now that we've uh, done lock picking, now we're at the choice, at the last uh, part of the recovery phase where each gear lock may do one of the following. Restore to full health, well, it's the first, uh, it's the first, um, day and everybody is already at full health and now we can search for better loot 
uh, or uh, and, and you know what let's say we're going to search for better loot so uh, I'm going to give um, let's say we're going to give patches another piece of loot we got utility parts so that's a nice piece that's a nice loot card I would not normally want to get rid of that but let's just say that I have I just want to get rid of it I have no need for it I want to try and search for better loot you manually discard the loot card you want to get rid of so you right click the card you don't want to keep so I'm going to get right click on utility parts it's now gone and you just come up here to search for better loot and all this is going to do is roll six attack dice and see what the results are oh how this is quite quite unusual usually you're, you you get one bone and that's it I got three bones so in this particular case it uh, drew three loot cards for me presented it's, they're, pre they're presented here in this box I can either keep Fortune of Discovery, Troll Brew, or Reinforced Buckler. Let's say I wanted to keep the Reinforced Buckler, and so I'm going to double click on that. The other cards are automatically discarded, and uh, the Reinforced Buckler is added to my loot. So that's how Search for Better Loot works. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about scouting. Uh, if I click the Scout button, well, okay, uh, so Patches have, uh, has already uh, completed the recovery phase, so it's giving me a warning message. Uh, I could override it if I wanted to, but let's uh, go over to Boomer and have him do a scout. So I'm going to click the Scout button. It rolls the die. I got a 6, so I have a choice of a 1.5 point or 20 point batty. Uh, let's say I choose a 1 point. It's early in the game. We scouted a bog pole with poison one. Well, I don't want that uh, on the top of the deck, so I'm going to click yes to move it to move it to the bottom of the, of the batty stack. And doing so automatically moves the bog pole to the bo bottom of the pat uh, batty stack. And now I've completed my recovery phase. If I go over to Picket and have Picket Scout, Picket rolled a three, which means a, on a one, two, or three, you automatically scout a one-point batty, so it, there was no choice. He scouted a bog frog. Uh, normally, he probably want to, wouldn't want to keep the bog frog on top of the stack, but let's say uh, that uh, Picket has a thirst for poison, so he clicks on yes, and, you, and oh, no, he clicks on no. I got that backwards. Damn, sorry. Uh, Let's go. Let's just have Picket Scout again. I'm going to get an error message. I'm going to overwrite it. So I'm just going to click yes. So uh, this time he scouted a cobalt green thumb, uh, and I'm going to say no. Let's not move it to the bottom of the stack. And so I get a reminder of what's on the what's what has been scouted so far for one point baddies. Now remember, you can if 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 you forget if you if you lose this message if it goes away if you click it and you don't want to get it back you always have the option to go to view batty stacks to see what you've scouted so far so that accomplishes the same thing that message is this, just a simple reminder now for the case of tantrum instead of left clicking on scout I'm going to right click on scout there might be situations where you just get to scout a one, five, or 20 point batty, and you don't have to roll a die for it. So in that case, you can right click for a free scout of any batty stack. Um, it doesn't even say you can left click to do a scout because it's kind of obvious. Uh, but uh, if I right click here, it, auto it doesn't even bother rolling the die. It just gives me a choice of one, five, and 20. Let's say I say, uh, I'll cho choose five for kicks. And we scouted an owl bear. Let's say, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, not, we will keep it on top, so we won't move it to the bottom of the batty stack. So I click no, and now here are the scouting results for the five point batties, and leave an owl bear on top. If I go back to view batty stacks, there's the cobalt green thumb from earlier. There's the owl bear that we just scouted. So now all uh, members of the party have completed their uh, recovery phase. So now if I click on draw a new encounter, uh, advance the day counter, yes. Oh, oh yeah, I guess we never got to, didn't... oh, because uh, when you right click on scout, it does not consider that as being part of the recovery phase. It treats that as a special sort of a scouting. So um, uh, let's just say that we're coming off a battle here 
and uh, Tantrum, uh, let's say, is down to one and one HP. So Tantrum's not going to scout. Tantrum's going to restore health. Uh, in this case, we can left click to restore Tantrum's health. But if we know that the whole party uh, or a lot of members of the party got hurt, and we simply want to restore all their health, we can all we can right click on restore health. And, therefore, and in that case, all gear locks who have not yet completed the recovery phase and who are not at maximum health will get, have, have their health restored. So if I right click on restore health, it's going to restore Tantrum's health, but it's going to determine that Patches, Boomer, and Picket have already completed the recovery phase, so it's not going to do anything for them. And if uh, they had not completed the recovery phase, but let's say Patches didn't get hurt at all and was at seven, it's not going to do anything for Patches in that case. So if I tried to draw a new encounter, I would very quickly find out that Patches had not yet completed the recovery phase because that right click on restore health didn't do anything for him. So it reminds me that I have an opportunity to uh, scout for Patches um, and not waste my recovery phase. At this point, all members of the party have uh, completed the recovery phase, so I'm going to draw a new encounter. And now we don't get the warning message. Uh, we'll move on to day two, hardly out the gate. And I think that pretty much covers the recovery phase. Uh, we talked about picking a lock, restoring health, scouting, uh, searching for better loot. Yeah, there's nothing more to talk about. So. Uh, now we get into the meat of the uh, of the training. We talk about the battles. So that will start happening in Chapter 10. Hope to see you there.